ऑनरेबल इलेक्शन कमिश्नर श्री अरुण गोयल जी सीओ तमिलनाडु श्री सत्यव्रत साहू ऑफिसर्स फ्रॉम इलेक्शन कमीशन एंड फ्रेंड्स फ्रॉम मीडिया वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑफ यू फर्स्ट I extend a very warm greeting to each one of you who has gathered here for this press conference. We have had a detailed review of the preparedness in Tamil Nadu of the general election to Lok Sabha 2024 for good two days, and I'll brief you as to what happened in those meetings. Tamil Nadu has a long history of local self-governance. The secret ballot methods exercised to elect members to the village councils here. So it is a very deep-rooted tradition of a democracy. And it's a pleasure to be here in this rich cultural and democratic place. Friends, media is our very, very natural ally. And I am really happy to see you in such a large number here. I appeal through you, first of all, before I start, to all the voters of Tamil Nadu to please come in big numbers when the elections take place and join in the festival of democracy, which we have this year called Chunao Ka Parv and Desh Ka Garv. In last two days, we met all the political parties, national political parties, seasonal political parties. We also had detailed meeting, long meeting with the deputy commissioners, collectors, SPs, IGs, ADGs, and thereafter with the enforcement agencies of the state and center. And Lastly, with the Chief Secretary, DG, and all the senior officers of the state to review the poll preparedness. Friends, I will first of all tell you what the political parties mentioned to us. What, was, uh, what were their demands? What were their complaints? I will list them first for you because it is a part of our mandate that we first disclose as to what is the demand which the political parties, one of the strong stakeholders have. Then also through my uh, briefing would tell you as to what we want to, how we are addressing those uh, demands of the political parties so that no question is unanswered and I like to give answers through you. So we met uh, national party AAP, BSP, BJP, CPIM, Indian National Congress, NPP and besides there were four state parties. Uh, AIDMK, CPI, DMDK and DMK. So what they basically asked, I am just first giving you that background. Most of the parties requested to curtail the use of money power and inducements during the election period. They wanted to disqualify the candidates who are found distributing cash during the elections, liquor or any inducement material. One of the parties complained that parking of the cash is already taking place, so act on that straight away. Basically, this was all about curbing the misuse of the money power in the elections here. Process-wise, they said that uh, the machinery, bureaucratic machinery needs to be impartial. They need to provide a level playing field so that every candidate is uh, treated equally. There was a perception amongst the political parties, some of them, that the FSTs and SSTs which are used, they themselves had sometimes become the informers for those who are where the rates are taking place. They demanded that permissions to the rallies and entitlements which, this, which the political parties have should be given on an equal footing. It should not be discriminated that uh, again the point which relates to the level playing field. They said observers should be deployed from outside the state. They further said that uh, with observers, their, no, their phone numbers, where would they meet, their fixed timing should be available so that political parties can go and meet the observers. Mm -hmm. CCTV cameras should be put uh, maximum possible to the extent maximum possible on the polling booth. CAPF should be deployed in most of the sensitive and those kind of booths. On the parties, many parties demanded that election should be in one phase. They also wanted a strong action against the imp uh, imp impersonation cases which people c try to do during the voting. Uh, 
there was a demand to curtail hate speeches during campaign, encourage political parties to have an internal code of ethics, collaborate with educational institutions. This is what one demand to raise awareness amongst the young voters. One of the request was to further refine and purify the voter list. Some of them demanded double verification of voters so that impersonation does not take place. One of the party highlighted that the transfers which the ECI mandates of those officials who have stayed for more than three years is done in letter and not in spirit. So therefore look at it. So friends, before I answer, I will answer all of these questions which they have raised during my presentation at wherever it is relevant or in the end. But before I start, let me tell you that commission is extremely determined and all the collectors, all the enforcement agencies have been very, very strictly told about this, that we want an inducement free election, free, fair and transparent. And inducement free we mean the misuse of money in the elections should, would not be tolerated. Commission has absolutely zero tolerance towards the misuse of money, distribution of money or distribution of freebies in any form, inducement in any form. I will answer these specific uh, questions raised by the political parties. To give you a brief snapshot of the parliamentary constituencies, there are total in 39 in the state. Kerala and Karnataka we also reviewed here, their uh, COs and SPNOs came. They have, as you are aware, 20 and 28. Next. The overview of electors, 6.19 crore uh, electors and a very happy trend is that female are, voters are more than the male voters. And we appeal to them to even surpass the male voters when, the, when they come voting. There are 8,294 transgenders. And persons with disability, we took a special drive so that all the persons with disability get into our electoral roll. We uh, earmark them so that we can give them facilities. They are 4.33 lakhs, 14.66 lakhs, very, very senior citizens. And, and the voters in the age of 20 to 29 are 1.08 crores. And friends, you would again be happy to know that first time voters, with a special emphasis was there, we enroll our young voters. So between 18 and 19, there are 9.18 lakh voters who are between 18 to 19 age group. If we come to the inclusiveness of the election, electoral gender ratio is 1036. As I mentioned, it is very favorable. And there are more than 205 ACs. Uh, assembly constituencies where this ratio is more than 1000. Even in 18 to 19 years voters, there are uh, girl voters who are 4.47 lakhs. So this is the inclusiveness in terms of the women, focus on women. When we come to the next uh, inclusive issue, that is the uh, youth. So we appointed designated dedicated AEROs for the colleges. And because of this, there are 5.26 lakhs first-time voters in, 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 in Tamil Nadu. So much so that we have got 65,000 advance applications. These advance application means whose age is not still 18 as on 1-1-2024. So whosoever is completing the 18 years age during uh, this entire year of 24, has also given us advance application. This is what we have made them unable. And of these 65,000, whosoever completes the age of 18 years by 1st April, that is the qualifying date, he will become entitled to vote. So that's the, even, even who is becoming 18 on the 1st of April will get the chance to vote. <coughs> we also took a special drive. This is how we are improving our uh, electoral rolls. The persons with the, the, the particularly vulnerable tribal groups, there are six and 18 plus population, we have enrolled 1,62,000 eligible. Out of them, we have enrolled 1,60,000, is almost 99% enrollment of persons with tribal, uh, particularly vulnerable tribal groups. 
this is the inclusive form of the electoral roll when we come to the polling stations now after a year i will tell you about polling stations there are total 68144 polling stations in the state of tamil nadu we will we have mandated the webcasting of 50% but co tamil nadu is uh, going to 66% he may go even higher that is his internal decision here we will have some booths managed by pwd employees some by women and some by youth this is to empower them as such by managing the booths and it's a it's a it's a, it's a demonstration of their uh, and their, their their capabilities and empowerment all the polling stations would have assured minimum facilities in terms of drinking water electricity toilet or ramps wheelchairs all that would be available on the polling stations when we come to the elderly and the pwd voters we are giving them the facility to vote from the comfort of their home they need to apply form 12d within 5 days of the notification our experience is that many senior citizens want to come to the polling station themselves rather than doing it but in for any matter for any eventuality if they want to do it from their home they are um, authorized they are enabled to vote it from their home and similarly the persons with disability there is an application of the commission called saksham they can book their voting straight away from there and the kind of facilities these they want on the day of uh, voting friends i'll now come to the enablement through the it applications and this is one particular slide which i like to draw your attention and request you to please popularize this this is everybody's duty to curb the menace of money power this is the application called c vigil means vigilant the citizens be vigilant on this application if there is any information which a voter has that money is being distributed or some freebies are being distributed or something wrong is happening campaigning is taking place in wrong way somebody is treating somebody with uh, wine or whiskey or this kind kind of thing liquor they can just text type it and text it or they can take a photo and send it on this application they need not write where 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 from it is coming the application will capture the longitude and latitude of the location and there would be a fst or an sst 5 10 kilometers around it it will automatically reach that particular fst and within 100 minutes our team will reach and decide whether the complaint is right then they will take action if complaint by the way is partially right then also they will take action but action is guaranteed within 100 minutes time that means please popularize this and help us in curbing the menace of money power in 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 during the elections these are the two further uh, important uh, applications if a voter wants to know where his location is where his booth is what is his uh, voter card number who is the blo he wants to download the e epic if his mobile is uh, seated in the electoral roll all this can be done and as the political parties ask us so this is one answer i am giving here whosoever will apply for an for 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 a ground or for any other thing first will get it first so if party a has applied for the ground before the party b it is only party a which will get on through application through this portal and this will have a time stamp and everything another very important uh, initiative which people must use is know your candidate every candidate who has a criminal background is supposed to publish it three times in newspapers prominently and also on the television social media so this is the right of the voter to know about his candidate or her candidate so the informed voter you can even know the assets liabilities affidavits everything about your candidate you can also look at his photo so everything about the voter about the candidate which you want to know 
So this is our enablement to the voters so that please know about your candidate and then choose. So informed choices. Uh, friends, further, if I tell you as to what we, uh, after this, ensure that the elections are uh, inducement free. 145 check posts would be functional to keep a very strict vigil on interstate borders. The borders with uh, Karnataka, Andhra, it would be all Kerala be watched that no liquor or anything comes from those places. And also it checks while going. So whom, how would we do it? We met the enforcement agencies today, state police, excise, DRI, banks, uh, airports, uh, railways, RPF, GRP, narcotics, everyone together, so airport authority, so that the teams can be made and people do not work in silo. And what did we direct them? So this is again answering to what the political parties raised. Everyone has been directed to take extremely stringent action if there is any case of distribution of money anywhere. They have actually been asked to uh, be extremely vigilant and allow money not to flow from one place to another place. They have also been directed that if money has already been uh, stacked somewhere before the election and things like coupon and all people are working, please be smart and catch them. Similarly, liquor and freebies, GST and others will keep a strict watch on eBay bills and also on the godowns that FMCGs, the fast moving consumer goods like cookers and sarees and all those stuff are, there is no unnecessary spot in the demand and people do not use them. The agencies have also been directed that it is not that they take action against the smaller smaller fellows who are handling this money or who are handling the freebies. Rather, they must establish forward and backward linkages and see who is, who is behind it and, 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 and book the kingpins. The vigil will be kept on transfers through the online ballots also. Banks will also keep a watch on who is drawing the money, who is doing what want to have absolutely zero tolerance towards any kind of misuse of uh, money. Banks have also been said, told, that the vans which carry cash to load into the ATMs and from chest to chest should not be allowed to move after the designated time which is around 5 o'clock in the evening. Because these vans with the private vendors can also be used camouflage to carry the cash. So the ambulances, uh, these uh, cash dispensing vans are all will be under strict uh, watch. All the airports and the air strips where which are under CISF or otherwise like Salem and all would also be all the time under watch for any kind of smuggling of gold or this that. Even the Coast Guard will keep a strong watch on the smuggling part. Their coordinated teams of the excise, police, transport, forest, which will be on the roads to see that the money and all inducement related items are not, not really circulated. They will all now submit the weekly reports so that we can monitor. They are all being brought into a application again which has been made called the ESMS, Expenditure Management System, Expend Expenditure Seizure Management System. That will also bring all the enforcement agencies, central and state together and then uh, their reports weekly would be analyzed. We very strictly directed the DMs and SPs and all the IGs and ADGs, police commissioners that they have to provide level playing field. If there is any moment we come to know that the level playing field is not being provided, it is partial, will come down extremely heavily on all of them. In uh, democracy, officials have to be absolutely, absolutely impartial. There is no scope of any partiality on any front. 
and we'll be extra vigil, keep extra vigil on this particular point. Transfer policy I have mentioned to you already. They would also be akin to a single window system where most of the political parties can apply for the permissions they require at the DC level, district level because the parliamentary constituencies sometimes across the across the districts also parliamentary constituencies in two districts, three districts. So that would also happen. Voter information slips will reach the voters around a week before, between five days to seven days before the election. So that, you know, voters are well informed in time that this is your slip, this is your uh, booth, and uh, they, they, they are facilitated in uh, going to the polling stations. Friends, other than this, all the district magistrates, all the SPs, senior officers have all been told to be extremely, extremely particular in curbing the menace of money power in the state of Tamil Nadu. With this, I would like to add my address and say that we again appeal, request all the voters to come in large numbers and request the media. Media is actually our eyes and ears on the ground. There is all the procedures which we follow in uh, commission. Uh, machines, counting centers, trainings, everywhere media is allowed. It is a part of the, it is a part of the, of the, of the, it is a part of the disclosures that we are watched regularly. So while you are eyes and ears, we request you to spread the C vigil and KYC kind of applications amongst voters and keep requesting them along with yourself to come and vote in large numbers. How we will check the online uh, transactions? So the online transactions are generally through ballots, which are they are linked to the, I can't reveal too much of you as to how we will tackle it, but it's still, we will keep a very strong watch. The banks will be keeping watch on the accounts from where the money is going to multiple accounts. So that is the valid through which they are using. The organization called the National Payments Corporation of India Limited, NPCIL, will also be roped in to keep a watch on the um, transactions through the valid. If people will try to find new ways of uh, transacting, transferring money, we will also be not very far behind to catch them because the systems have all been put in place. As regards symbols, symbols are allotted on the basis of the symbol order. There is nothing against uh, except that. And these are relatable to the votes polled by the parties. Mm, a symbol allotted previously does not necessarily follow that in every cycle it will be given. So the each cycle is determined on the basis of votes polled in the previous elections and that is how it may change. This is only for the non-deserved symbols. The reserved ones for the national parties and the regional parties are different. Coming to the EVM, VVPAT, 100% counting, using EVPAT, what shape, there is, EVMs have been used in the country for 40 years. VVPATs have also been used in the last elections everywhere. So there is no new system. It is exactly the same uh, way that EVM, VVPATs were used except the technological upgradations. Please visit our website. There are more than 100 questions which have been answered. So whatever you want to ask me, there is a specific question. There is a specific answer about the robustness of the machines. The, there are around more than 30 decisions also of different high courts and honorable supreme court. We have made, we have published a booklet, book recently. That also in the software version is placed there. All the points you are mentioning have all been discussed, debated at length in the Honorable High Courts, various High Courts and Supreme Court, number of times. So we are, we are within our mandate and working exactly according to the legislative provisions and the mandates of the judicial mandates. So amongst the AMFs, the assured minimum facilities which I mentioned, Drinking water, a must. Shades, 
on the polling stations and also place to sit. These are the basics which are being, uh, which the collectors have been directed to provide. So depending on the timing, depending on the weather, all these things will be provided. They are very conscious that this is the time of the heat and I mean the hot sun is there. So people must be given and then the other option is that people come early to vote so that you know they don't get during campaign the campaign period is uh, between the between the political parties and the voters the narratives which are on which are through the fake news it's a double edged weapon while we use the social media intermediaries for our welfare programs for our awareness programs there are fake news which is spread today fake news is running as you mentioned that the election dates have been announced so please uh, join our uh, channel which we have it has counted it next maximum within half an hour saying this is fake so i would request that the commission's uh, website commissions what is the name of the channel the sweep channel uh, at ecy sweep uh, this is the sweep which is the main page through which we communicate and the ECI spokespersons both have the channels and it is there on the channel. We have directed further all the district magistrates and SPs to have the cyber security cell and the social media cell in their districts. And so is the case with the state government in the headquarter. Anybody, anybody for that matter who is trying to spread the fake news the strict action will be taken against them appropriately either under section 69 or 79.3 of the Information Technology Act along with relevant sections of the IPC. We won't allow the narratives, false narratives to spoil the democratic festival in any manner. Promises, uh, somebody asked the while the political parties have a right to make promises in their manifesto, the voter has a definitely right to know how would these be fulfilled. There is a, this is an ongoing case which is pending, the matter is sub judice so I cannot comment more. But yes, voter also has a right to know whether these promises are genuine, can be fulfilled, cannot be fulfilled, where from the money will come and we have prepared a performer which exactly explains this, makes the parties to write through this performer, make a disclosure, but the matter at the moment is subjugated. Um, national anthem is played as per the as per the act of the um, uh, of the court, national anthem court. So there is nothing beyond that which one can mention. It's the court which determines as to how the national anthem will be played. We have not either mandated or restricted either way. That's all. Okay. About the bonds, Commission is always, always in favour of transparency. It has been our stand continuously. So we will facilitate transparency in whatever form, whenever it comes. Thank you very much.